Hello and welcome to this very special conversation. We are going to talk about digital India. We are going to talk about India going cashless. If you recall, it's been almost two years since the government declared its so-called war on cash when demonetization happened. Simultaneously, the Digital India Initiative was launched. Aadhaar on the meantime, in the meantime, which is our biometric database here in India, has been growing and growing very fast. So what does this all mean for people who use a credit or a debit card? Is plastic going out? Is digital coming in? Is it secure? What is the new technological changes that are happening the world over? Joining me, two very special guests, Bob Rini, who's the Executive Vice President at MasterCard. Thank you, Bob. You do a lot of work in this area and we'd love to hear what you're doing. And Shudipta Roy of ICICI Bank, he's the general manager in charge of the cards business. Thank you very much, uh, Shudipta, for joining me as well. Bob, you've been doing a lot of work on biometrics. Uh, and, you know, again, uh, there was a, a comment from one of your colleagues who represents the Asia-Pacific zone that, you know, in uh, most part of this region, almost 50% has actually gone digital. So it's not right. the physical card, really, that you're using that we've been used to. That, you know, when you talked cards, it was the physical card you went and swiped but it's actually going digital. You don't really need to use that physical card. Uh, can you tell us a little about some of the innovations on the biometric side that you're doing back home? Oh yeah, um, and that, I think that 50% that of what we call card not present, meaning there wasn't a physical card involved, is, that's a probably an industry leading in number. So again, a lot of innovation, a lot of change in markets like India. Um, and what we did, since we looked at the uh, two-factor authentication, that's some, some way to verify the consumer's identity, is um, we decided, or we looked at some uh, breakage in the system, because some of these things have been in place for quite some time, mm -hmm. and technology has advanced. And one of the things that, is, that we've seen is asking a consumer to remember something mm -hmm. is not a good idea. Uh, we've also seen that sending one-time passwords through yeah. SMS is a... Um, is not always the best consumer experience either. So we look for alternatives where a person wouldn't have to remember anything or have to receive something on the phone that may, may or may not get there. Uh, biometrics is a way that a consumer can uh, quickly and safely authenticate themselves. And we did work on three different modalities. We did fingerprint, which would take advantage of some of the innovation in the phone space. We did facial recognition. Mm -hmm. And we also have worked on voice because that was something that will help us when we go to things like connected cars and other use cases when you have a speaker in your home. Hmm. So those are the three main modalities that we've worked with. We've also worked with things like iris when we uh, have a, an iris scan on a phone or other devices. All those ways are ways for consumers to quickly and easily tell you who they are without having to remember anything or, or use some uh, very clunky consumer experience. It has a lot less breakage in it. We find that consumers really like that. We have done some surveys, 93% of the consumers felt safer when they used a biometric. Uh, and it keeps the data in a nice, safe place, too. That's another innovation that's come. It used to be that the data had to be centralized in a big database that could potentially be compromised. And that's, as we've gone on and worked and learned things in the industry, we've learned that that's not always necessary. You can keep a lot of this data under the consumer's control, maybe on their phone, where it's not in a big database to be compromised. So those are all learnings we've had through biometrics, better consumer experience, nothing to remember, safer data storage. And it's the reason why we're really behind that, because technology is allowing us to be safer and then still let the consumer uh, have some control over the data. And are you saying that these technologies have been rolled out already in, say, the USA and some of the other countries? We've got, you see a lot of uh, advancement and usage in biometrics. Again, not news to India. Uh, there's been a lot of biometric work in India for many, many years. Mm. Other markets, it's a relatively new phenomenon over the last two or three years. We have uh, our own biometric services that have been launched in 37 markets. Uh, but I would say that it's getting to be more acceptable from consumers' uh, experience standpoint. And, and their desire for convenience is really driving a lot of it. When five or six years ago, even in a market like the United States, we would do surveys and say, would you do a biometric? And consumers would say, fingerprint, that's what you do when I get arrested by the police. Mm. And then, <laughs> interestingly enough, though, uh, when we start to advertise it or have people use it, they'll stand in line overnight to get the newest phone that's got the easiest, more useful biometric experience. So uh, consumers have warmed up to it, I would say, globally. And uh, convenience always rules, and it's my job to make sure that it's not only convenient, but it's safe. And that's where we 
put a lot of technology behind how that's secured, how we store that, how it's matched, where it's put, where it's not put. All those things are factors that technology has really advanced in the last few years. And I think that it, as we bring it into uh, more markets, you'll see a lot more usage of it. It's been a pleasure talking to both of you. Thank you very much for joining me here on this very interesting conversation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much.